Okay, fine. So in the last session, uh, we discussed about uh, different testing types like what is regression testing, retesting, and functionality testing. And today, what we will do is uh, we will continue with the uh, remaining testing types. Once we are done, then we will go to the execution. That is nothing but our testing. Fine. So here, right, you will be doing your usability testing. Usability testing also you will do very commonly for any application. Not only requirements, right? You will be doing your testing based on your requirements. So you will be doing your testing based on your requirements and also <clears throat> you will be doing your usability testing, which is nothing but verify whether your application is look and feel is proper and user is easy to navigate your application, these kind of things. So this is a non-functional testing. This is not part of your functionality testing. Here we are not checking any functionality. Here we are just checking the usability. It's a non-functional testing. If you see here, I said that it's a usability testing. Usability testing is nothing but user friendliness check. That means verify your application is user friendly to the end user. So this is this is what I will be checking in this particular testing time like your user interface which is nothing but verify your application look and feel is good and then verify user is easy to navigate between the application between the screens see let me tell you one thing some applications what will happen is if you want to complete any transaction you have to do so many clicks as end user what you will feel you will feel that oh it is taking lot of time i have to do lot of work then only i am able to complete the order so as end user you will feel bad and then uh, sometimes what will happen is you will uh, not right you, you you will write uh, you will not feel good about that particular application and then you will go to another application that's the reason nowadays everyone is giving very much importance on this usability testing now <clears throat> when you say that usability testing here we are focusing this in this usability testing more about your look and feel verify your application is attractive to the end user look and feel is good and then user interface that is nothing but ease of use see that whether your user is easy to navigate in your application and also speed also that means like right I want to check that uh, in my interface in, a, in my interface I am able to complete the transaction with less number of clicks or operations because right sometimes if you are doing more number of clicks and all probably right you may not like the application so <clears throat> this kind of testing is called your usability testing. Usability means look and feel testing and you are uh, easy of use and you are less number of tasks to complete any action. So this is called your usability testing. Then we will be talking about your installation testing. So installation testing also is, uh, is one of the testing type and we will do this installation testing also. Here when you say that installation testing, right? you will see that whether uh, end user is able to install the application with the different conditions with the different conditions that means right uh, let me tell you one thing if you are buying one software so if you are buying some software what you will do you will install it before installing your software that means before coming to the production that is properly tested by your testers with the different different configuration because the, as a end user right I may have a different configuration so different users will have the different configuration still application is able to install it so what I will do is during my testing time I will be trying to t install my application with the different different configurations that is called your installation testing if you observe right uh, sometimes if you are buying any software they will give some uh, user manual in the user manual they will clearly mention <clears throat> if you want to install this software you have to use so and so that means you have to use your uh, RAM so and so you have to use your hard disk so and so you can see that details how you are getting the details because of your uh, testing only while doing my testing I will say that yes I'm able to install my application with so and so configuration that means it's compatible with that particular software so this is not simply they are providing that manuals and all they are they are doing lot of work they are doing lot of testing then only they will give the final conclusion so which environment is good for your application okay fine <clears throat> 
then you 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 can hear one more testing type called alpha testing actually alpha testing is one of the user acceptance testing this is a uat testing this is one of the uat testing and as i said earlier also uat testing means this will be done by the client or business so they will do this uat and uat is two types one is alpha testing another one is your beta testing so these are two testing types in your uh, uat and the difference between your uh, alpha testing and beta testing is nothing but when you say that alpha testing and this is one of the user acceptance testing and here the application will be tested by the client in the development environment that means right once we are done with our application development once we are done with the testing and then we will give that application to the uat team they will do this uh, testing first what they will what we will do is we will ask the client to test the application in our environment in our development environment the reason is why we will do this is now if any issues is there that then it is easy for you to fix the issues it is easy to modify modify the code because we are in the same environment that's the reason what we will do is first we will ask the client to test the application in our environment in our environment now one more testing is called beta testing this is the final testing we will do on the application before releasing to the real time before releasing to the real world so beta testing <clears throat> no ranjit this is a uat user acceptance testing that means this is the testing done by the business or client to make sure that the application is implemented as per our requirement or not that means see here we develop the application we test it everything is good and then we will give that application to the client what client will do he will cross check whether everything is covered or not what uh, this cross check is nothing but your user acceptance testing so you will cross check all this requirements is covered or not so that 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 kind of testing is nothing but your user acceptance testing now <clears throat> you can divide this so user yes competition we have to do both alpha and beta testing that i mean right here we are learning alpha and beta testing but if you go to the real time right people will say that just uat they will not talk about any alpha and beta okay but if you go to the some organizations what they will do is they will say that uh, let's have first alpha testing followed by your beta testing end of the day these testings are nothing but user acceptance testing okay <clears throat> so here what we will do is uh, now alpha testing means nothing but client is testing the application in our development environment in our development environment so what right client will do is he will see that application if everything is good he will say that i am good if something is there if some issues are there then he will give that suggestions or if he give the issues then what we will do is we will do that uh, fixes and then we will uh, again give that uh, bill to the client for the retesting now this is your alpha testing now when it comes to that uh, beta testing this is the final testing we will do on the application before going to that uh, production this is the final testing we will do now what is beta testing beta testing also is a user acceptance testing but <clears throat> in this beta testing client will test the application in the real time environment if you observe right if you go to any websites people will say that we are in the beta testing process we will be coming to the real world very shortly you can observe that people will say that we are doing some beta testing we are we are in the beta version we will we will be coming back to the real world very shortly something like that you can see that messages what do you mean by that actually i'm planning to right i'm planning to uh, buy i'm planning to sell some products in my website now what i will do is once my application is developed now first i will do a trial run trial run is nothing but your beta testing because i want to see that how the application will behave with the real time users that is called your beta testing beta testing is nothing but it's one kind of user acceptance testing and it will be done in the real time environment so it's not the complete full fledged application i want to still i want to have a one round of testing with the real time users that is called your beta testing you can see that you can see that since many people will say that we are doing that beta testing 
right we are doing that beta testing and then we will come into the real world very shortly something like that people will say that you can see that okay <clears throat> this is our beta testing see any doubt let me know right any 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 testing type let me know because right once you go to the organizations people will say that uh, we will do beta testing that means you should be in a position to understand okay beta testing is nothing but it's a final testing we will do before releasing that application to production and this will be done by the client and it is a kind of user acceptance testing fine monkey testing okay here right what i did is right i i listed out uh, whatever that testing types are important whatever very commonly used test testing types these are all very commonly used testing types these are all very commonly <coughs> used testing types one more thing is monkey testing actually right monkey testing we don't have any proper test cases here right we will not have any proper test case there is no test cases here first of all so here what we will do is monkey testing name indicates what is monkey testing what monkey will do it's a abnormal condition right see what monkey will do tell me right when you say that monkey monkey will do a ab abnormal behavior similarly monkey testing is nothing but like you are testing the application with abnormal conditions that is not a regular it's a irregular like say for example here we are not following any test cases now what i will do i'm having ok button i will click the ok button continuously five times what will happen so it's a it's a irregular testing it is not your regular testing right regular testing means right uh, i will click on that ok button once or twice see who will click that ok button like 10 times who will do that no one will do that okay it's a irregular that's why i said that here monkey testing is nothing but this is irregular testing and then you are trying to break the system by following irregular operations and here there is no test cases nothing is there without any test case right what i will do is usually you are testing your application you will do your functional testing you are done with all the test cases and before giving the final sign off what you can do is you can do one round of uh, monkey test just click here and there see that what is happening see that what is happening because right here monkey testing means i will not follow any test cases just like a monkey i will test that uh, application by following some irregular operations irregular like right uh, you will be entering your uh, username as like 100 characters see that what will happen you will be entering your password as 200 characters see that what is happening in in real time it will not happen it will not happen but here as a tester you are trying to make sure that your application is stable even though user is trying to do some irregular operations that is the intention okay fine <clears throat> One more testing type you can hear is ad hoc testing. Ad hoc testing. So here, right, ad hoc testing is nothing but uh, what we will do is so. This is a freestyle of testing, right? We will simply say that it's a freestyle of testing. I will tell you why it is a freestyle of testing. So here, in this ad hoc testing. So when you say that right ad hoc testing is nothing but it's a freestyle of testing it's a freestyle of testing and this this testing can be done by anyone so why we will do this ad hoc testing means right here uh, my application is done and then we are done with the test cases and then we are done with the testing and then i want to do one round of ad hoc testing ad hoc testing is nothing but like i want to make sure that all my testing is working fine and here right what will happen is this ad hoc testing can be done by anyone business analyst can be done and developers can be done testers can be done or any team members can done this ad hoc testing there is no limitation that uh, only tester has to do that ad hoc testing everyone any team member can perform this ad hoc testing okay and one more thing here also right uh, here we will not follow any test cases here ad hoc testing so what we will do is <clears throat> we are not having any test cases but yes we are having some functional knowledge 
So here uh, in ad hoc testing, I should know the complete system. Then only I can perform this ad hoc testing. Everyone can do, project manager can do, tester can do, BA can do, developers can do, anyone can do. Here the, here the intention for this ad hoc testing is to make sure that our application is working as expected by just doing your ad hoc testing. That means here there is no test cases, there is no documentation, just go into that application with your application, not with your functional knowledge and start testing the application. And one more point here I wanted to tell you is, I said that ad hoc testing. Ad hoc testing is a freestyle of testing. What do you mean by that freestyle of testing? Freestyle of testing is nothing but So I said that here right ad hoc testing is nothing but it is a freestyle of testing. What do you mean by that freestyle of testing? That means here right, I am not following any test cases, I am not following anything. Just go into that application and start doing your testing. When you are doing testing like this, and then if you missed any test cases during your testing, those test cases also will be covered as part of your ad hoc testing. Because here right, you are trying to test your application based on your function knowledge. So you will, you will almost, you will execute almost all the test cases. If you are missing any test cases in your actual test execution, those things also will be covered here. That's why I said that it's a free style of testing. And also you can say that it's a ad hoc testing is used to cover the uncovered scenarios. That means if you uncovered any scenarios during your testing time, those scenarios also will be covered as part of your ad hoc testing. That is also we will do. Like usually we will do this ad hoc testing also. And Concurrency testing. So here uh, when you say that concurrency testing, this is uh, one of the performance testing actually. Concurrency testing is one of the performance testing. That means right, I want to test my application with uh, concurrent users. What do you mean by concurrent users? Concurrent users is nothing but like whenever multiple users are trying to work with the application at the same time, then it is called concurrent users. So especially right, uh, if you are working with any application and if you are doing your performance testing, then you can hear this term concurrent. Concurrent is concurrency is nothing but like whenever multiple users are trying to work with the same system at the same time, then we will be calling it as concurrency users, concurrency testing. That means now right, uh, if you observe like uh, if you see your internet banking. And then internet banking right now what I will do is I wanted to check whether multiple users are able to log in into the system at the same time with the same credentials. It will not allow. You can see that. You can see that. It will not allow. And also now if you want to see your application behavior with your n number of concurrent users, how your application is behaving, then you can use this concurrency testing. Concurrency testing is used to verify the application behavior with your n number of concurrent users. When I say that concurrent users, that means you are applying that uh, many users at the same time on the same application. That is called your concurrency testing. How my application is behaving with my concurrent users. That is called your concurrency testing. Usually concurrency testing we will do in the as part of your performance testing. Performance testing. End to end testing. Right? Different people will ask you like what is the difference between system testing and end to end testing. What is system testing? I told you system testing is nothing but like uh, it is used to test the entire application as a whole. So to test your application you will be using so many testing types all together like all Combining all these uh, testing types will be call it as your system testing because system testing is nothing but the testing the entire system as a whole and end to end testing is the, is one of the testing inside the system testing. Like you are getting so many testing like functional testing and your retake, regression, retesting, installation, end to end all these are part of your system testing only. 
end to end testing is one of the testing type available in your system testing and here end to end testing is nothing but the name indicates end to end testing that means you are checking, you are testing the end-to-end -end flows of your application. If you are testing any application, now what you are doing? You are checking the end-to-end -end flows of your application. What do you mean by that? Login, create an order, log out. One end-to-end -end flow. Login, search the order, log out. One end-to-end. -end. Login, delete the order, log out. One end-to-end -end flow. So here, end-to-end -end testing is nothing but you are testing the end-to-end -end flows of your application that is called your end-to-end -end testing. Okay? Fine. One more thing is exploratory testing. So this exploratory testing actually, right, uh, this is also similar to your ad hoc testing, but there is a slight difference between your ad hoc testing and your exploratory testing. Exploratory testing will be done by the testers. That is the first point. Because ad hoc testing can be done by any team member in the team. But exploratory testing will be done only by the testers. That is the first point. And here, what we will do is the name indicates exploratory testing. That means you are testing the application by exploring it. Right? You are testing the application by exploring it. By exploring it. That means what you will do is you will go to the application and you can explore the explore the application and then start testing it. It it is it is it is the tester job. What you will do is as a tester you will be testing your application by exploring the functionalities by exploring the functionalities. Here in this exploratory testing you will be having very less documentation, but you will be having the application in your hand. Explore the functionalities and then start testing the application. That is your exploratory testing. And automation testing, we will be talking about that anyway going forward. For the time being, what you need to understand is manual testing means a human will do. That means as a tester, what you will do is you will go to that application. Right now, as a tester, as a tester, what you will do? You will go to the application and if you want to test this, you will enter your values manually. That is called your uh, manual testing. But when I say that automation testing, you will be testing the application with the help of tool. What do you mean by that? That means whatever the operations you are doing in your manual testing manually, the same things can be done via your tool. That means I will write a program in the tool and based on my program, tool will do the activities accordingly. So automation testing is nothing but you will be doing your testing activities with the help of a automation testing tool. The tool can be anything. It can be QTP, it can be Selenium, it can be XYZ, whatever may be the tool. Okay. And one more thing is compatibility testing. <coughs> So here compatibility testing is nothing but here also compatibility testing also we will do a lot. Now one of the requirements is like this. See your requirements is like this. Mm. Requirement says like this. Here, right, uh, when you say that compatibility testing means now you are having one requirement saying that application will support IE, FF, that means Firefox and Chrome. When you are saying like this, what do you mean by that? That means as a tester, you have to check whether your application is compatible with Internet Explorer, Firefox and Chrome. So this is called your compatibility testing. Compatibility testing is nothing but verify or check whether the software is running properly with your different configurations like different hardware 
different operating system that is called your OS compatibility testing. That means I want to check my application is compatible with XP, compatible with Vista, Win7, Win8 like this. Then, right, so it is called your OS compatibility testing. And if you want to test your application with your browsers, then it is called your browser compatibility testing. So based on your requirement, what you can is, you, if it is applicable, you can do your compatibility testing. Compatibility testing is nothing but testing that application to check whether the application is compatible with your uh, different versions of your browser, operating system, databases, like that. That is called your compatibility testing. Compa so browser compatibility testing is a very common thing actually. Right? When I say that uh, browser compatibility testing, right? browser compatibility testing is very, very common and we will use this browser compatibility testing very commonly in our uh, regular testing. Very common. This browser compatibility testing. Browser compatibility okay fine. Then localization testing right so here, uh, localization testing is, this is also one of the testing types, it's based on your uh, requirement only. If the requirement says that uh, you are responsible to test your application with your different, different languages, then you will do this localization testing. Localization, see, if you see right, right now, all the applications, they are uh, developing the applications with the different, different languages. If you observe, right, if you observe right, uh, almost, uh, all the applications, they are uh, developing their application with your multiple language. Like they are developing in English, Japanese, French, XYZ, whatever. So they are developing that application with so many languages. Now as a tester, you have to make sure that your application is properly localized in all the languages. <coughs> in all the languages. Now what I will do is, as a tester, my job is to check whether my application is properly localized in the, all the languages. For that, I will be doing my localization testing. And to perform this localization testing, no need to learn your German, English or Japanese, not required. No need to learn any language, right? No need to learn any language to perform this testing. What you can do is, you can simply use your Excel document to perform this localization testing. Let me tell you. How to do that? I tell you how we will do that localization testing. Localization testing is very easy and then no need to learn any languages like you are uh, German, Japanese, Span, Sp Spanish, like no need to learn that. Now what you can do is, you will be using your simple Excel to perform this kind of localization testing. I will tell you. I will tell you. Okay. So here I will say that English. Localize. Just take any language. Okay. I will take your simple uh, Google. So if you want to test, say for example, right, I want to test in a different language. Let's go to some language. If you go to this language, right, no need to learn your uh, uh, local language. Not required. No need to learn this. So usually what will happen in the real time means that your uh, client will provide the expected strings. That means what these people will do is, right, uh, clients will provide the expected strings. That means now they will say like this. They will send the Excel document saying that, Now, so what they will do is, like uh, your uh, client, as a client what they will do is, they will be saying like, see, now we are planning to develop our application with the different, different languages and in English, if you have this one, right, if you have in English, you are India, then if you are selecting the language as Telugu, then your expected results should come like this. 
should come like this. Now, once you got your actual, so this will be sent by your uh, client. This will be sent by your client like what is your English, what is the expected value for your uh, respective other language, respective other language. Now, once you got your application, now I want to test, right? I want to test whether exactly it is coming, but I don't know that language. How can I do that? What you can do is it's a simple thing. Just whatever the value is displaying, copy it and you can go to your actual value and paste it and paste it. Now what you can do is you can simply write a simple formula. Say that it's very easy. Like just say that is equal to exact. That means I'm checking that is it exactly matching? Is it exactly is it exactly matching or not? Is it exactly matching? Comma. Is it exactly matching or not? See? So, no need to learn that language. No need to learn that language. Now, what you can do is you can get your expected values from your uh, business or client. You can write your expected value here. And then go to your application, get your actual value. And then here you can write a simple, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, formula is equal to exact. See here, right? If I give space also, it will say fail. See what will happen? If you give even a simple space also, it will say that fail. So what it will do is whatever your values are there, it will take as it is. It will take as it is. So this is how you can do your localization. Usually, if you want to do your localization testing, you will be getting all the expected strings for each language from your client and then go to that application match with each and every string actually this say localization testing is a tedious task and it will be very boring job but yes you have to do that if localization testing is applicable yes you have to do that and take the expected uh, strings from your business go to that application match with each and every expected value if it is matching say that pass if it's not matching say that fail this is your uh, localization testing Uh, as usual, like uh, positive testing is nothing but like if you have any functionalities, what you can do is you can give that uh, positive data. That is nothing but your positive testing. That means to test any functionality, you are giving your valid data. Giving that valid data is called your positive testing. Positive testing is nothing but you are testing the functionality by providing the valid data as input. By providing the valid data as input, that is called your positive testing. Positive testing. Okay. And negative testing. I told you many times, many times, like right, when you're doing your testing, if you're doing your negative testing, then only you will be finding n number of issues. You will find n number of issues when you're doing your negative testing. Huge number of issues you will find in your negative testing. So negative testing is nothing but what you are doing, you are trying to test your application by providing invalid data. Now, what I am doing, I am having a, some application. I will be trying to test that uh, functionality by providing invalid data. So, when you are providing this in, uh, negative testing, then only you will be finding n number of issues. Okay? Then, right, uh, performance testing. Performance testing is nothing but it's a non-functional testing, right? This is a non-functional testing and usually that there will be a performance testing team and uh, performance testing team, they will do this performance testing. So what is the performance testing? First of all, tell me. Performance testing is nothing but to check the whether your application is up to the mark, whether the performance of your application is up to the mark or not. Performance testing is nowadays is very important. Let me tell you a simple example. Say for example, if you're trying to buy some product in one of the website and like when you're trying to buy the product and seems like your application is very slow, it is not responding uh, uh, very quickly, it is taking a lot of time to load the page. What you will do as the end user tell me, okay, it is taking a lot of time and immediately you will go to another competitor website and then you will buy the product. That means what is happening? End of the day, you are losing the business. You are losing the business and you are losing the customers and also you are losing the brand because what you will do once after buying the product you will go to your friend and you will say that um, 
like I bought some uh, product from so and so website, but I tried with another website that is very slow. That means your brand name also going down. That's the reason people are giving very much importance for this performance testing. Performance testing is nothing but uh, like right here we are not checking any functionality. We are checking the performance of your application, how the application is behaving with n number of users, how it is uh, responding with n number of users. Okay? So that is called your performance testing. And when you say that performance testing, that is not the single type. Performance testing is divided into load testing, stress testing and volume testing. And if anyone is saying that performance testing, that is not a single testing, load, stress and volume. But most of the times we will do load testing only. <coughs> most of the times we will do load testing only. We will not do any volume testing and all, but most of the times we will perform this load testing. Okay. What is load testing? Load testing is nothing but the name indicates verify whether your application, uh, verify the application behavior with the given expected load. That means your client will say that, say I want to make sure that my application is working for working fine for 100 users. That means now what I will do, I will do the load testing for my 100 users. So here load testing is nothing but to verify the application behavior with the expected number of load. That is called your load testing. That is called your load testing. And usually <clears throat> performance testing will be done by the tools. It is not done by the manually. Because just think logically, if I want to test my application with 100 users, I cannot hire like the 100 people to test a single application. Practically it is impossible. So what we will do is always we will use automation testing tools to perform your performance testing. That means in, by using these automation tools you can create some virtual users and test the application. So we cannot hire like 100 people to test the application. We will use these tools and we will create some virtual users and test the application. That is your load testing. Load testing is nothing but testing the application with the expected number of users. That is called your load testing. That means you are testing the behavior of your application. That means what do you mean by behavior? Now if 100 people are trying to work with the application at a time, how my application is behaving? How much quickly it is responding to the request? It is required. I mean, if 1000 people is trying to work with my application at a time, how it is working with all the 100 users? Is it uh, responding quick enough for all the users? That is the question. If it is responding for all the users with the same time, yes, I am good. If it is not responding quick enough for all the users, that means there is some problem in your application. And uh, we will raise that concern. So developers will uh, look into that and they will fix the issue. <coughs> And when you say that stress testing, stress testing, right, stress testing also is a kind of load testing. But here what we will do is, stress testing is nothing but you are testing the application beyond the expected number of users. That means, here, right, client will say that, client said that you want to test the application with 100 users. Now, as a testing team, what I will is, I will test my application with, with 100 users immediately. I will try to test my application more than 100 users. I want to make sure that my application is stable beyond the expected number of users. And also I want to see that where my application is breaking, where my application is not behaving properly for my n number of users. For that you will be doing your stress testing. Stress testing is nothing but you are testing the application beyond the expected number of users to see the application behavior that is called your stress testing okay fine these are all your testing types any doubt please let me know any doubts let me know if you have any doubt let me know in these testing types okay fine <coughs> Okay, now right, we understand that we are having like different different testing types and then we are having our test cases are ready and we review the test cases and everything is ready. The next question will come, test case execution, which is nothing but your uh, testing. Right here, see, we are done with test planning, 
we are done with your test case design we are done with the test case review once we are done with the test case review we will start with test case execution we will start with your test case execution yeah yeah uh, so anu right uh, let me know at 9 o'clock uh, as we decided right yesterday uh, as decided uh, yesterday like i will take the session till 9 o'clock only that is fine just uh, ping me once it is 9 right let me know so that i will stop it and then tomorrow we will meet same time <coughs> we will meet uh, same time okay what time what time i said 8 am same time okay same time i know that from tomorrow onwards there is a daylight saving but uh, just follow your timings so that i will change my clock accordingly the time is same just uh, join the session by 8 am cst i will change my uh, clock okay <coughs> fine so here right what we will do is now right we will start with your test case execution that means we need to start your uh, testing okay now what is test case execution what is testing if you see here test execution is nothing but so you are writing your uh, test cases and then while writing the test cases what you will do you will be writing your expected result you will be writing your expected results now i'm done with my test cases and then developer also done with the development and developer he will give the application for you to test it once he is giving that application for you to test it now so actual results will come from your application what exactly implemented by the developer for that particular test case so expected result is nothing but which is coming from your requirement document and actual result is nothing but what exactly implemented by your developer for that particular test case so if it is matching if it is matching then we will say that test case is false expert is equal to actual yes false if <clears throat> expected is not equal to actual if expected is not equal to actual that means our test case is fail that means right your expected value is not matching with your actual value so obviously you will fail the test case and then your defect will comes into the picture i will talk about that defect tomorrow and i will complete this uh, defect life cycle also tomorrow so your fail will comes into picture whenever your expected value is not matching with your actual value then your uh, defect will comes into the picture that means it's a fail test case it's a fail because it's not matching i told you many time as a QA team member as a testing team member whether you have a right when you are comparing your expected and actual values if you are having a small deviation or big deviation any deviation is a defect only that means right your uh, requirement document says that it should be name should be agent name but here but here right your developer implemented like this still I will not agree Still, I will not agree until and unless I will get some confirmation from my client or my project manager, in fact. So here, right, uh, so everything is same, but there is some uh, uppercase and lowercase. Still, I will not agree because as a tester, your job is to make sure that your application is implemented. Whatever is there in the requirement document, it has to implement as it is, as it is. That is important. Okay. So... <clears throat> Whenever my expected and actual ma results are not matching, I will say that it's a failed test case. It's a failed test case. Okay. Fine. Okay. So if my expected and actual results are not matching, then I will say that it's a failed test case. Now, if you see here, right, when you are doing your uh, test case means that right, you are executing your test cases. While executing your test cases, what you can do is, right, you can see that uh, what is that uh, expected value and actual value. If it is matching, say that test case is paused. If expected value is not matching with your actual value, say that it's a failed test case. <coughs> and here, right, when I say that block test case, block test case is nothing but, like, right, I'm having my test case, but the test case is not applicable for the current release. Then change the status of the test case as blocked because the test case is uh, not applicable for the current release so that you can change the status as blocked. You can change the status as blocked. 
Okay, now we will do the start executing the test cases. We will take that uh, test cases and then start executing. Okay. <coughs> okay. What is this? First one. See, execution is nothing but whatever is there in the test cases, you have to execute as it is. And see that whatever is written in the expected result is matching with your actual result or not. If it is matching, we are good. If it is not matching, we will write, write that as a defect. Let's try to execute. First test case. Now, this is your application. Right? You got your application for your testing purpose. This is your application. Right? This is your application for your testing purpose. You got your application for your testing. You got your application for your testing. Okay. So, what is my test case says that? First test case. Let's execute that. Execute is nothing but like right, you will be getting that application. Take each and every test case, go to the application and then start executing. That means, now, what is my test case says that first test case. Search transactions on member payment. Okay. Select member payments from payments drop down. And search results should be displayed specific to member payments. That means what is saying now here go to your here select your member pay select the payment type as member payments when you select that member payments then here it has to show the results as member payments okay now here right I'm getting the results yep here I'm getting the results but I'm not sure whether my results are reflecting or not how, how will you make sure that how will you make sure that when you select your payment type as member payment, here you are getting only member payment. How will you do that? See, writing the test cases, executing the test cases is a little different. Writing the test case, you can simply write it. But when it comes to that execution, there will be a slight difference. Now here I want to make sure that I am getting the payment type as member payments. When you select your member payment, member payments in the payment type only that member payments are displaying here how will you make sure then what I will do immediately I will do a member payment here and if it is reflecting here then I will say that I'm good and I will say that my test case is passed so that means what I will do I will do some member payments here I will do some uh, member payments member payments member payment for search functionality submit Sub that means now if you go back to your search and if you select your member payment may uh, payment type as member payments then it has to show this uh, amount if it is showing then I can make my test case as pass otherwise I will say the test case is fake let's go back go to your uh, search select the payment type as select the payment type as member payment select it see it's coming it's coming that means that means my payment type member payments is working as expected now what you can do is during your testing time probably right you can create two two or three payments and you can check that not only one you can try with uh, two or three payments and then you can check that. That is also a good way actually. Okay, clear? Fine. Mm. Fine. Like this. So this one is done. Actually, right, in the real time what will happen is, right, uh, you will be writing one test case for each one. Like this is one test case. 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 Like this. Usually you will be doing that uh, testing like this. Anyway, uh, for the time being, let me have a couple of things okay fine so first one I checked it is working correctly it is working correctly now second one so I, I'm showing you like couple of them like uh, showing all the things is little difficult so select payments from the payment drop-down system payments okay go here select your system payments you can check everything, but actually right, I am showing you a few of them. If you want, you can check all the things. System payments. Okay. 
So I'm getting the results, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I'm getting the right results or not. For that, what you can do is, you can make some uh, system payment here. You can make some system payment. System payment. System payment. The search functionality. Submit. Let's see that. Okay. Go back here. Select your type as a system payment. So it's not showing. See, it is not showing. How come? See, it is not showing here. See, it is not showing actually. See? See, when you select your uh, all, when you are selecting your all, it is showing. It is showing properly. But when you are selecting your uh, system payments, see, it is not showing. See, 10, 12, 2013, after that there is no system payment. That means your system payments is not working. Is it clear? You got the point? You got the point? So like this, this is the way to test. So member payments search is working. So is working as ex is working as expected. But actually, right here, uh, two points we are uh, having separately. That's the reason, right? Uh, we are having one is pass, another is fail. If you are having separately, you can make one as pass, another is fail. System payments is not displaying. I will say like this, newly created, newly created system payments is not displaying in the basic search results. That means, what do you mean by that? Your result is fail. Your result is fail. Okay. Is it clear? Fine. Okay, let's take the second one. Let me know if you have any doubt here. Okay, it's fake. What is the second test case? It's advanced search. Advanced search transaction on the member payment. Okay, that means here user is trying to do your advanced search. Here, right, I'm sure that you can find minimum two or three defects here. I'm sure that. That means here, right, if it is advanced search, now what is your test case says that Advanced search transactions and member payment like you can uh, search with your name, you can search with your firm date, to date. So you can search with anything. Now, let me search. First what I will do, I will select all and click on search. See that whether it is working or not. Yes, it is working properly. Good. Now, I will select my, I will give my login name. Let's see. It should come only with that particular. Okay, it is coming properly. Yeah, it's coming properly. Okay, good. Let me change with another name. Search. So it should come only. Yeah, it's good. We are good. We are good. Okay. Now this time what I will do, I will select my member payments. I will select my member payments and I will select my username as this one. Just now I have created one member payment. You remember? Let me check in advanced search whether it will come or not. Yeah, it's coming. We are good. This one only, right? Yes, we are good. We are good. We are good. It is coming. Okay. Then. Now what I will do is I will be selecting your next right. What I will do is. Now. Here. What will happen now? What will happen? If I click on search, what should happen? What should happen if I click on search? If I click on search, what should happen? What should happen? <coughs> Ideally, what should happen? I say I entered my from date is 9, to date is 17. 
So obviously, right, uh, you should get some error message saying that you cannot search for the future dates. How can you search for the future dates? Tell me. And if you're doing your search, how can you search for the future dates? You cannot. Click on search. See, you are not getting any message here. You are not getting any message. You can log this as a one more defect. See how many defects you will get. Now, here what I will do. I will put March that. Now what will happen? Tell me. What will happen now? What will happen? What will happen? See here, I selected my from date as 3rd March. Two date as uh, first March. See how you can say that right from is uh, greater than your two. It will never happen. It has to throw some error message. Let's see. See still it is working. No message here. You can log it as a defect. See how many defects you are getting here. Now here what I will do. I will put wrong date. Let's see that. Okay you are getting a proper message. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, I'll be entering here. I'll be entering here some search. I'll be entering some description here and search. That means whatever the transfer, whatever the transactions with the description as search, it will display here. Just now I have created that payments, right? In that payments, I wantedly given some uh, this name so that you can see the results here. Search function and search function. Like this. Okay, this is the way to test your advanced search. And here, what I will do is next time, I'll be multi multiple uh, multiple things. Like now, what I will do is I will say like this. That means, so show me the transactions whose the login name is Prasad, and it should have all the transactions should have search function. Let's see. See, only the Prasad who is having that uh, description as search, only those things will display. It will not display anything. If it is displaying, then we can write that as a defect. Is it clear? So here uh, we found one issue is accept date issue. We will write like this otherwise application is allowing for future date search future date search actually it's a wrong one username okay oh -ho. Future data search. Then, what is the second one? Mm. Application is allowing from date is more than two date. It should not allow. It should not allow. So I will say that it's a oh, -oh. it's a failed test case. It's a failed test. Case. Okay. So we are done with two test cases. Is it clear? So that right, remaining test cases I will execute tomorrow. And then we will be talking about your uh, defect life cycle. What is your defect life cycle? And then uh, how to log a defect. How your bug reports looks like. Those things I will discuss. Okay, fine.